Speaking of consoles, let's take this email from John in nearby Fremont, California, who writes, you have recently done two spots on PS3 Blu-ray audio settings, and I'm sure you're sick of the subject. However, I haven't upgraded my sound system, and I don't have HDMI. I'm assuming on the AV receiver. I have an older receiver that only has optical and coax digital audio inputs with plain old Dolby Digital and DTS-51 decoding. What audio settings should I set my PS3 and Blu-ray players to for best effect? Signed, John from Fremont. Yeah, before anybody mocks, you know, a lot of people have a lot of money tied up in, in AV receivers. They don't necessarily want to upgrade just because they have DTS. They gotta, they've, they've, they've got a toss link out the back of the Blu-ray player. Or Still their very PS3. usable. There's a toss link I'll be there, honest right? with you, unless, you, unless you're dealing with a very well-tuned setup, you might not even hear the difference. Right. So... I, I, I would agree. Heretic that I am, I am, I, I am overdue to, to accept an invitation from Dolby to go over and hear the perfect, uh, one of their amazing auditioning rooms where I can actually, they're telling me um, it's going to be obvious, the oh, Dolby yes. True HD experience. But With The right setup, it would be. So are we trying to ensure bitstream output over the, the optical connection? Yeah, the just connection? what settings should you look at in the okay. PS3 to ensure that, you know what, I'm going to use the optical output on the PS3 to my AV receiver. HDMI probably going straight to the TV. I actually have a similar setup at home with an old home theater and a box kit mm -hmm. in a room where the I'm unable to use HDMI audio output. So I'm doing something actually quite similar to this and easy enough to set up. Um, I like the sparklies on the PS3. I'm telling menu. you, and they change for the seasons and uh, anyway, spring. Spring is here. Anyway, <laughs> log into your PS3, make sure it's updated, and scroll over to your settings on the cross-link media bar. To the remote play settings? The security uh, settings? The sound, sound settings? There we go. Okay. I was a little confused there. Audio output settings. And here you can select what you want. And basically you're going to say, give me optical digital. What formats? Now, this can either be done automatically or you can pick and choose which ones you want. You just mentioned that your, your AV receiver supports DTS and Dolby Digital, so you can just go ahead and select those. So basically, we just like checkbox, checkbox. Totally. I would. Would you undo the linear PCM or leave them in Those place? two are probably supportive. The 41.4 kilohertz and the 48 kilohertz are fairly standard. Okay. Honestly, I'd try to select them all if possible, but if you, if you select one of these and it isn't compatible, you can end up with some painful noises coming out of your, your system. So do be careful with the linear PCM audio stuff. That's really a raw feed of audio, and if it's not supported right, you'll hear howling, screeching, yeah, and, and bleeding mayhem. Maybe you shouldn't check those. I'm just going to say that. Anyway, there's that. Boom, done. It gives you confirmation. Hit enter. Also, audio multi-output. So if you want to do multiple connectors simultaneously, maybe you're running the HDMI into a receiver, but you still want the optical running anyway, here you can have that set up as well to ensure that whatever format you selected in that other menu I just showed you, mm -hmm. this menu would ensure that to make sure it's not being downsampled to two-channel audio in any of those cases. So it gives so you pretty much everything you need there. You might want to do it to your HDMI output to your television when you're gaming in a quiet, late-night environment. Like using the and TV speakers. And your toss link. Or in his skin, person. like John? So. <laughs> what was that poor gentleman's name? From? It is John. John from Fremont. And so in that case, maybe you do want to use the TV speakers. And right. then you would have the HDMI audio for your uh, regular connection. And so, be perfectly happy with that. So maybe they set it up so that like one output goes to the TV for late night gaming. The other one goes to the full on surround system. Exactly. And it's similar to what John's probably doing. Right. Uh, Maybe, maybe late at night you want to use just the TV speakers and not fire up the full surround sound system. So in that case, it would be nice then <laughs> to ensure that, well, in this case, it probably wouldn't matter for the audio multi-out mode. Two channels is probably all the TV's going to handle anyway. But right. what the heck? I say just turn that feature on. It's there anyway. So. <laughs> Good deal. John, hope that helps you out. It's, it's basically, look, we've said it before, we'll say it again. You know, the idea of 7.1 and having a brand new receiver is nice, but if you got Dolby 5.1, you've... And actually, I should say and Dolby and DTS. I, I have to say it's amazing how many discs, are, Blu-ray discs especially, are encoded in DTS and have no Dolby support unless you want to watch them in Spanish or French or Uzbekistani. And or no gaming, too. To Don't forget Uzbekistan. your game consoles. Make sure you go into all your games and select 5.1 audio or whatever the high-end audio format is. <laughs> Reward yourself. Reward yourself, you people. You have this all set up. <laughs>